Hello. Today we'll take a look at creating a new character in the City of Brass using the What's Old is New character sheet template. You always start a new character in the Characters Toolkit. Give them a name and then select the Core Rules. The Core Rules value is what determines what template we use for preparing the character sheet. In this case we'll pick What's Old is New and that will drive things such as what ability scores are preloaded, or what skills are available for you without having to add them. Your privacy is going to dictate the who gets to see your character profile, and your sheet privacy will determine who gets to see your actual character sheet. You can give them a picture if you want, and a short description that others will see when they see your character. Base values are a special type of modifier that is housed and stored with your character, but does not actually display anywhere on your character sheet. We'll use them to modify attributes that are far-reaching, such as the base attack bonus of a die 20 character or the proficiency bonus of a 5th edition character. What's Old is New doesn't use any base values, and so you won't find any preloaded. Descriptors are the building blocks of your character profile, and generally speaking, you should think of them as things that you would want to have public. So, Things such as your character's race and species, or his or her age, height and weight, and things of that nature. We've preloaded all of the standard descriptors, but you can always add your own if you, if you prefer. Say we missed one such as size, you could just drop it in here. And then you can drag them around to order them however you want. You'll find ability scores preloaded with your character sheet. Those are the standard ones. If you need to add one, it's as easy as clicking the little plus and filling out the appropriate fields. Feats, special abilities, and characteristics are special elements that you'll use to build out your character's powers and abilities. You can use think of feats as things like a die 20 feat or a what's old as new exploit. Special abilities and characteristics uh, are what you would want to use for other non-standard powers. The difference between the two is how they're stored. A special ability is a permanent element, like a feat, also a permanent element, that is stored with your account and will be reusable with any character that you have. A characteristic is specific to the current character and will not be available for reuse with other characters. All three of these elements have access to a special feature inside the City of Brass called Add Modifier. Add Modifier allows us to impact one sheet element with another. So in this case, having added Turk's racial power, I'm going to now use the Add Modifier ability to impact his ability scores and his defenses. His race gives him a bonus to endurance and to strength as you can see demonstrated here. And now if we look back at his ability scores we'll see that the strength and the endurance score have both increased by four. Of course add modifier is not limited to simply modifying ability scores. You can use it for other things such as defenses, skills, and the like. Pay attention here as we take a look at one of our defenses. You'll see there's a calculated modifier in there. That calculator modifier is added up automatically by the City of Brass. If you want to add to a modifier, don't adjust the calculated modifier. Instead, use the miscellaneous modifier. The last thing to note here is the short description. It will be visible on your character sheet at a glance, so let's make sure we put just a few things here to help us at the table. Next up is skills. Because What's Old is New uses a keyword skill system, we don't preload any in the City of Brass. If this was a Pathfinder character, for example, you'd have a list of skills here. But you can simply add the skills that you want, indicate the number of ranks if you'd like, and then indicate your dice pool. You can see they show up on your character sheet. In Turk's case, he's going to get the three we added, the Carry, Hardy, and Intimidate, and also a couple more for his starting skills. Now let's go ahead and look at class levels. We'll use those to keep track of Turk's careers. Each query is going to give some modifiers, and in many cases we use the modifier, the add modifier functionality for that. Here you can see the Navy Brat modifies his endurance and a couple of other ability scores. So I'm just going to make a, use a use modifier to increase those. When I've finished with all of his careers, I'll go back to my ability scores and calculate their actual dice pools. I didn't do that earlier since I knew Turk was going to have five careers added that would adjust them. Some of his careers also give him characteristics, or perhaps I'd want to use them as feats or special abilities. In my case, I'm using characteristics for all of Turk's stuff. So I just click over to characteristics and add one. 
Every career also gives a skill, so I'm going to click over to skills, and I'll add a new skill, record its rank in this dice pool. If I had adjusted an existing skill, I would simply have increased the ranks of that skill. We'll repeat this process several times for each of Turk's careers. Each time, we'll use add modifiers to increase his abilities. We may use the characteristics to add a special power, or in some cases, go add credits when his classes or his careers give him credits. The final thing we'll do with the careers is add the gear that Turk got from them. Here you can see I'm selecting my gear from a drop-down menu. That's because gear, like feats and special abilities, is permanent and stored with my account. This gear can be added to Turk or to any other What's Oldest New character that I make. I'll also use the Add Modify feature on the gear to add to Turk's defense. His armor, for example, gives him some soak, so we'll put that right on the item. With the careers finished, I'm now ready to go back to his ability scores and figure out the dice pools. So it's just a matter of going back. You can see that they've all been modified, and I input the appropriate dice pool based on the derived stat. Next, we'll go ahead and do Turk's exploits. He's going to get five total, and to handle these, we'll use the feats section of the City of Brass. Remember that feats are permanent items stored with my account, and for that reason, you can see I'm picking them out of this drop-down menu. I've already added them to my account, and they're available for any What's Oldest New character that I should make. Of course, like many other elements inside the system, I can usually add modifiers to adjust things such as his defenses, and I can drag them around to order them however I want. As we get into Turk's derived statistics, you'll see things like our trackables that we'll use for his health. Trackables are special in that they appear on your character sheet and can be edited directly from the character sheet. So you'll use those for things that you're going to change frequently. We've also got movement where you'll find initiative and all of the different types of movement that Turk has available to him. If there's a movement type you want, you can add it, or if you don't want any of these, simply delete them. We've preloaded the defaults for the What's Old of New system. Next up, we'll go ahead and add some of Turk's defenses, putting in a base value. To that base value, the different modifiers that we've added via add modifier will be added. And then finally, we'll come into his descriptors and figure out his carry and his natural damage. A couple more descriptors specific to the What's Oldest New system. So to equip Turk, we'll go ahead and turn his credit score into actual credits, which is done using the derived statistic in the What's Oldest New system. And then I'm going to purchase a gun and a sword for him. Remember that equipment is stored with the account, and so I have to pick it from the drop-down menu here. And of course, like everything else, I can drag it around to order it however it is I prefer to see it. Take off the credits, and I'm all set. The last thing I need to do for Turk is give him a couple of attacks. These will be available on my character sheet and will be used quite frequently. You might notice that many of the options in here we're not going to use for a What's Old is New character. Really, I just need the name the attack type, maybe it's range if it's a ranged attack, the damage, the type of damage, and then the actual damage roll. With that, I'm all set. So let's go ahead and look at our character sheet. Here you see the layout. You've got the attacks there on the left and the dice pulls that you can click on if you want to roll them. We've got movement underneath that. Here's our trackables towards the center. Just click on the cog wheel and you can modify the trackables, lowering your health, for example. At the top, we've got some key elements, such as health. Then you've got your attacks there in the middle. Again, you can click on the dice pools. The gold, all of the gold numbers are interactive, and you can click on them to roll, whether that be your skills or your stats or whatever. You've also got your characteristics here towards the center. You can click on them to bring up the full description, and you see the short description there. Same with feats, abilities, equipment, etc. The money is like trackables. If you click on the little cogwheel, you can adjust it right here live on your character sheet. I'll go ahead and do that so you can see it in action. And then finally we have our notes section where you can uh, type things that you don't want to forget for your next session. And that's a wrap. That's how you create a What's Old is New character in the City of Brass.